Hi everyone, this is Akiko, the music director of the Mid-Texas Symphony, and today I am honored to share the screen with our principal trumpet, Andrew Junak, um, who is also associate professor of music at San Antonio College. And I thought we would chat about um, and how Andrew's been doing, but also about the process of a music director search, because uh, the MTS Retro, which is a concert playback from you know, Mid-Texas Symphony's past performances, uh, what we're playing for you is a performance from September of 2018, uh, which happened to be my audition concert. So this was very memorable and um, Andrew actually brought it up um, over the summer. Uh, this performance, I just wanted to ask Andrew to talk about the process. But anyway, first of all, Andrew, how are you doing? Hi, Akiko, and hi, everybody out there. I'm doing fine. I, uh, I miss, uh, you know, seeing everyone uh, mid-Texas uh, family, not just the performers, but the audience and stuff. But uh, I'm, I'm hope, hoping that uh, we can get back together in the spring and uh, have some great concerts. That would be great. Now, tell us how the pandemic has affected you, um, besides not being able to play with us. Um, how are things over at SAC? Well, um, so San Antonio College is a part of a, um, a district of co uh, colleges, community colleges in, in uh, San Antonio. And uh, the district made a, a decision pretty early on. Um, by uh, June 1st, I believe, we had decided that uh, we would be mainly going back remotely this okay. fall. Um, and a lot of it has to do with logistics. It's a huge, especially San Antonio College, a huge campus. It has yes. um, almost 30,000 students. So uh, it was, you know, that can be problematic. So um, uh, so we've known for a long time. So we've been gearing up for it. It's a little tough on music programs because, of course, <laughs> the most important thing in a music program is, you know, getting to perform. Uh, so we figured out some virtual ways of doing that, and uh, uh, you know it's not ideal, but uh, we still have great interest in the program and a lot of very talented students. So it's working out uh, well so far, and um, we're hopeful that at least in the spring that we can bring at least chamber music back uh, to campus in some way, uh, so that uh, students, especially more advanced students, can get this this really good interaction with the other musicians that uh, is, is tough right now. It sure is. Um, speaking of interaction with other musicians, um, let's talk about this performance. So the reason I pulled you into this interview is um, over the summer, uh, the Mid-Texas Symphony solicited a Spotify playlist of recommendations of what to listen to during the quarantine to our patrons. Uh, and you actually recommended uh, this playing this recording from our own performance uh, of Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. Um, as I said, that was a very memorable one for me because what, it was my job interview um, performance. Uh, but what made you think of that performance? Well, okay, it's, this is a so. <laughs> Uh, for me, it was a very memorable uh, experience uh, for a lot of different reasons. So let me just kind of go into, I mean, as soon as I saw the email asking for recommendations, that immediately came to my mind. And I've played in Mid-Texas for a very long time. But what made this so memorable for me, of course, you know, uh, uh, this is the first time in a very long time uh, that anybody but uh, David Mars was on the, the podium. So that was very different, you know. Uh, and so, uh, you know, right there. And of course, there was this huge expectation of the season and stuff like this. But um, back in the early 2000s, <clears throat> I essentially got promoted from second trumpet to first trumpet with the, the orchestra. When my good friend Bob Cannon um, left the position to take the principal trumpet position with the uh, Austin Symphony. Uh, I think it was principal that he took, but he is principal now. So, but anyway, um, that first season, um, we played Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony in the in the uh, February, I believe it was, uh, or March, um, and 
I, I was so, so keyed up to play that piece of music. Um, it's, of course, it's so exciting and it's so challenging. Um, and I was, you know, you know, very excited about the, the prospect of getting to play the first one before. Well, about two weeks before the, um, the concert, I got the flu. And, um, and of course, it, the flu is tough, you know, it's really, really hard to practice and stuff like this. So I, I uh, recovered enough to be able to play, but I didn't think that I had, um, you know, the strength that I, I would have liked to have to do it. So to get to do it again was exciting to me, I, you know, uh, I'm gonna use that. Um, and then uh, there, was, there was one thing about, um, that whole experience uh, of that concert, particular concert that um, really stood out over the years and years that I uh, played in the Texas Symphony, all the way back into Akira Endo's uh, reign. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a moment in the, the last rehearsal, the Sunday rehearsal, um, and we were finishing up uh, rehearsing uh, the, the symphony. And we we had done really hard work i thought that that weekend and everyone really was concentrating and really um you know giving it their all and um you know it was it was there you know we were we're doing pretty good with it and um we still had maybe 10 minutes or so i'm, I'm thinking 15 minutes left in the rehearsal and you stopped and you went back to this one particular place it wasn't flashy. It it was very kind of uh, this moment for the especially the low strings, and um, you you took a few minutes just to work on getting a particular sound out of the orchestra, and I just thought, you know, these are whirlwind kind of concerts where we're, we're trying to put together these things, and here we were trying to refine something to the point where it, it became so profound. And it, to, to me, I, it, it just made me think about the whole experience differently. Like, wow, you know, this is uh, very special. This is something that um, I'm gonna treasure. And it, was, it wasn't even, I mean, the performance was great. And I went back and listened to the performance and I was so excited to hear how well it came out. But it was that moment in the rehearsal that just, and I wasn't even involved. I was just sitting there uh, watching and listening. And you, um, uh, you help mold this sound and you did it in such a, a calm way, very, uh, very clear in your instruction. And every time that they would do it again, it got better and better. And it was like, wow, I just can't believe this is happening. And uh, so that really stood out uh, to me, certainly. And so that's immediately, that's what I thought of when I saw that email about what do you recommend? I mean, I, it just really popped in my mind, so. Wow, well, thank you. I had no idea this was such a loaded question. Um, obviously, selfishly, I remembered it because that was my audition, but I had no idea. And I forgot that I did that in the last 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm so happy you brought it up um, because I think all of us, of course, would love to hear the Mid-Texas Symphony's performances when we are, you know, missing music. But right. I just thought, oh, you know, they're all archived somewhere on CDs, like in some closet. And, and it's hard to, we don't have, we didn't have them at our fingertips to play. So th that's why I was saying Spotify, which is all other orchestras playing. So I'm so glad you mentioned our orchestra and I'm honored that you remember that detail about that rehearsal. Now, another thing I remember about you that week is that you were also on the search committee. So um, you were interviewing me and then also there are three more candidates that came through town and uh, did the same spiel, interviews and then uh, rehearsals and the final concert. Um, take us back um, to, and just give us an idea of what it was like from your perspective, that music, how the music director search worked. Yeah. Well, you know, I, of course, I've never been on a, a music director search before, so this is the first time I've done something like this. And I, I um, you know, I, I tell you, I was a little reluctant to be on the committee because 
I'm a pretty busy guy with what I do, but um, I love the organization so much. I decided, well, you know, I, I just need to step up and, and be part of this process. And I'm so glad I did because, um, first of all, working with the other musicians and board members on this was, it was an awesome experience. Everyone took it so seriously and, um, you know, really thought about everything, every detail in terms of the ad and how we were going to go about uh, doing things. And uh, I, I was very, very impressed with that. I also was so uh, happy with um, how there was so much good give and take between what musicians thought was important and what board members thought was important. And, um, and uh, you know, there was never any kind of factionalism in there. And, and that was such a, a positive experience um, with that. You know, um, you know, the, we whittled down from a very large field uh, to uh, eventually four candidates that were all four just amazing musicians. And, um, you know, truth be told, um, of course, I knew you uh, from San Antonio Symphony, and uh, I actually knew Teresa Chung kind of indirectly because she um, is a very good friend with my wife's um, sister. Where they, uh, they were both, uh, I, I believe, involved with the Birmingham Symphony Orchestra or the Evansville, one of those, I can't remember. Um, so, and uh, so, and I, you know, I tried not to let any of that come in uh, to what I was doing. Um, and so that, that was kind of the bookend, you know, you were the first one to, to audition. She was the last one to audition. Um, she actually stayed with us when she was in town. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, it, it was quite uh, an amazing experience. One of the things that, um, you know, along with working with the committee and going through checklists and stuff like this. And, and um, one of the things that I did and I thought was really important to bring back to the committee was I talked to as many musicians in the orchestra as I could about their personal feedback with, with each conductor. And um, I'm, I'm not usually that extroverted in those situations, but uh, I went out of my way to talk to people that I usually don't even talk to because you know, you know, our, our paths don't really cross. Uh, but uh, I, I just, I was just interested, you know, to see their perspective of you know, how the rehearsals went, when they think of the performance, uh, this kind of thing. Because I, I just felt like it, it, it shouldn't just be, you know, what, what I think. I, I should really, you know, kind of formulate, you know, you know, what the decisions would be you know, not just for me, but as many people as we could. I, I made a point, um, it was a big season. We played some, some big music that season. I mean, uh, kind of unbelievably, you know, I mean, but I mean, you, he's, what you would expect though, everyone wants to, you know, every candidate wants to shine and, and, and do big things. Um, but I, I wanted to make sure <clears throat> that in my section that uh, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Thornton, Mary Thornton, my second trumpet player, and um, our third trumpet player, Dr. Joe Cooper, who unfortunately is, uh, fortunately for him, he took uh, the uh, big position with Oklahoma State University, but uh, um, uh, he is a very fine trumpet player, and uh, I wanted him to be involved in every concert in some way, uh, so, uh, uh, so that, you know, it wasn't just my perspective from back there, um, and so, uh, you know, the, it was unbelievable. The, the, the feedback on every conductor was so good. It was so good. I mean, musicians always will complain about some things, you know, but uh, uh, I, I knew that the committee really had hit it out of the park because of uh, how positive uh, the feedback was on, on all the conductors. You know? So, uh, um, I, you know, I'm just really proud of the process and, and being part of that because um, I think everyone has been so uh, um, happy of the result of it, uh, musicians, and I think uh, the reaction of the audience last year was just so outstanding. So uh, I think you know, we Thank did our you. Thank you. Well, I've been through many searches myself 
you know, on both sides, but as, especially as a candidate, I've been on many searches for different kinds of conducting positions, but I had no idea um, the kind of investment that went into, you know, from you individually and um, how collaborative it was. It seemed that way when I walked in the door of the interviews, but it's so interesting to hear that. And I think it says a lot about the Mid-Texas Symphony as an organization. And I always had a very warm feeling about the organization uh, through the friends that I knew and, and just through some other interactions I had with Dave Mars and other people in the organization. And uh, it kind of makes sense. What you're saying totally rings true. Um, even though I've you know, been a music director for only a year. Um, so that's, that's really interesting to hear the process. Um, now, uh, let's turn our attention back to the future. Um, we are hoping to go back to playing in January. Um, is there some particular program that you're looking forward to uh, this spring? Well, it's, they're all great programs. I am so excited about them, okay? So, I mean, I would tell you that on, on my music stand, I have, of course, Scheherazade, which is, you know, um, it's a piece of music for a trumpet player that you have to be really ready for to play because there's, there's certain kinds of techniques that uh, really push uh, the player to, um, you know, the, uh, the limit, uh, especially articulation wise. So, um, you know, I, 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 I like to always be very prepared for stuff like this. And, um, and of course, I always practice things like articulation all the time, but, uh, um, you know, um, I, I guess the last time I played Scheherazade was maybe 10 years ago or something like this. And it seemed so easy for me then. When I pulled it back out and I started practicing, I actually started practicing this last spring, you know, and I thought, I used to be able to turn that fast because I had the metronome markings on, on it. But, you know, you start getting back into it and you start uh, really pushing your limit. And yeah, you can't, you can do it. You just have to just, just keep working at it. So uh, that's certainly uh, uh, something I'm really looking forward to. I, I love that piece. It's a real kind of showcase for the orchestra. And then, of course, I'm really excited about this chamber music uh, program we're doing where we're doing the... Um, the Soldier's Tale, or the L'Histoire the Soldat of Igor Stravinsky. Now, I've gotten to do it um, a couple times in my career, and um, um, I, it's, it's one of my favorite, uh, you know, pieces of, uh, of music um, that then, you know, involves, you know, kind of a, almost a chamber ensemble. Um, and it also has some uh, <laughs> challenging things in it. It's not something that you, you want to go in uh, unprepared to play, that's for sure. Uh, it's a big audition piece. You know, so, but um, one of the things that's interesting about the L'Histoire is that uh, it's, it's written for the cornet, which is uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an instrument you might you know, see from a, maybe a Dixieland band or something like this. It has a, a little bit different sound that uh, I'm looking forward to. Do um looking forward to, to playing um anyway so uh, uh i'm excited about it. and of course the companion piece the uh, uh the dead elvis i've gotten to do that once in my life and uh had a lot of fun with it um and the you know the the bassoonist who's the star of that gets to dress up like elvis which is very very fun um, and i know uh, uh, the, the composer uh because um, oh, his name's escaped me right now. Michael uh, Party. Yeah, yeah. So he he uh, uh, has been in residence at the Cabrillo Festival, which I play every summer in, in August. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a festival this year. We had a virtual festival. But uh, um, he uh, has been the composer in residence uh, many summers, and we got to know each other uh, pretty well and played a lot of his music. Now, that's a pretty early piece of his, though. Uh, um, but it's... It's a really fun piece. So looking forward to that. The other programs are spectacular too. I mean, the Pines of Rome is, you know, an incredible showpiece for orchestra. And anytime you get to play uh, these great American composers like Copeland, John Williams, Elmer Bernstein, uh, I'm really looking forward to, to that program also. Great. Well, you know what? You could not have given us 
a better pitch for the spring season. So I think we really have to do it now. <laughs> you got yeah. me really excited about it again. Um, yeah. So got me really excited just about being with the Mid Texas Symphony. You know, I already was, but it kind of reminded me of how special of an organization it is um, across the board, and how lucky I am to be with you all. So uh, right now virtually, but I'm really looking forward to uh, getting back on stage with you guys uh, very soon. So thank you so much, Andrew. All the best uh, with your. Uh, virtual and in-person teaching at SAC and uh, elsewhere, and uh, we hope to see you very soon. Thank you so much, Akiko. I really enjoyed talking, and I can't wait till we can make music uh, together again. And and to everyone that's watching this, um, you know, I always say this uh, about um, the festival that I play. You know, the, the the musicians are incredible, but the, it's the audience, it's the community that that puts it on. That's the most remarkable and i feel the same way about mid texas you know uh, if it wasn't for you you know this audience that is so faithful to us you know uh you know that's what makes it really incredible so thank you so much for being uh supporters of mid texas Symphony. thank you andrew and everybody please enjoy this uh performance uh, that'll be a separate file, um, but uh, this audio performance uh, recording over Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony from September uh, two seasons ago. Bye.